Hey, we are Chris and Teresa and are obsessed with all things fiber and guiding you on your fiber arts journey. We own a successful fiber processing mill, an online needle felting business, experienced at raising all fiber animals, and are renovating a hundred year old school into a fiber arts retreat center. Processing, needle felting, yarn, roving, fiber animals, and our renovating progress are all topics discussed here. Think of this as your one-stop shop for advice, information, tips, and getting your questions answered on all things fiber. From raising the animals to the finished product and everything in between. So pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be inspired while you learn. This is YouTube. Welcome everybody to YouTube 113. <laughs> oh, oh goodness, we are up in the crow's nest, the penthouse. Eagle's nest. The eagle's nest, Teresa's office, the superintendent's office, yes. And the star of this YouTube is coming on in a little bit. And we she, have a special visitor, so we are saving a lot of time. 100 and a 105 and a half years old. Yeah. She graduated from here. In 1933. Mm -hmm. We weren't even a thought in our <laughs> mama's eyes at that point. Oh. One, uh, 1933, she graduated. She was born the same year the school was built. Yeah. And amazing. she was amazing. We wish we could have visited with her Long more. Time. She's coming back. Yeah, she's gonna come stay here. Mm -hmm. And we wish we could have come up with the perfect question. So if you have questions for Gertrude. Oh yeah, she'd love it. She would. She would love it. You can ask him. Yes. Ask him below in the comments. Yes, because we'll she invited us over to her home for coffee. <laughs> so we will take these questions and we will go to her home. It would mm -hmm. be our honor to do that. So yeah. questions for Gertrude. So that'll be on the end. Okay, anywho, and until then, Teresa, you have brought the cows home. We did bring, the cows came home. So how did that happen? So you had them over at the pasture. How do you get them in the trailer? We chased them on the four wheelers. Yeah. And then they went right in. So we uh, borrowed a little. Like a shoot thing? Shoot thing. Okay. From the neighbors. Okay. And it's like a portable corral system. Okay. And then we chased them in there and then put them right into the trailer with huh. that. Mm -hmm. So did they all fit in the trailer at once, or did you have no. to do a couple? Many, many. Oh, many. We have a smaller trailer. We don't have a huge trailer, so mm -hmm. it was many loads. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome, but they're home. Yeah. Are they in the pasture then with the sheep that we were in? No, they're in a different pasture. Oh, they are. Yeah. So they went through the sheep pasture and then out beyond that. Oh. <laughs> all right, so the cows are home. They're and, safely home. And mm -hmm. we've been just doing our own same old, same old here. Yeah, mm -hmm. not much change. Yeah. But this is kind of exciting. As you're watching, I hope you're watching this as we speak, because which was kind of neat because um, Gertrude referred to this, uh, what did she say? It was probably 2016 or so that she drove to the school to try to find it. Well, she didn't yeah. drive, she had, her, she had somebody drive her to the school. Anyway, there was a carload of them looking for the school and they said that they, could not find it. It was midsummer, and yeah. with all the brush and the heavy trees, you could absolutely not and see And she's like, wait a minute, I went to school there. I know it where it should be, yeah. and it's so many trees in front yeah. of me yeah. that you couldn't and, and, see it. And kind of funny, the day before, Trees, you had done this amazing little video montage. Mm -hmm. that Which was October 4th, 2018, mm -hmm. is the first time that we came to just see what, you know, because I said, Chris, we need to go look at this school. We had looked at a couple other schools. Mm -hmm. Let's go look at this. <laughs> Let's go look at this school because I remember it. You know, and I had just seen it from Highway 32, but it was beautiful from there. And I said, I think it's still there. I'm not sure because, you know, there's so many trees in front of it. I knew the trees had grown up in front of it, but you couldn't even see it anymore. And that's mm -hmm. October 4th was the day we came to look at it. When we drove up to it, I mean, we drove right up to the front of it, and I said, I don't know. Maybe it's not we'll here. We'll look. If it's not there, we'll continue our, and our it quest. Was, <laughs> and it was snowing that day on October 4th, and it was kind of yucky out. And we 
we're thinking we have to hurry up and get home before it gets worse. Yes, yes. We and we actually we had to go yeah. through the jungle, like parting the branches, and then we're like, oh, there it is. It's still there. And then we had to sneak around back and to find get in an the door. And lo and behold, there was a door that was wide open, inviting us in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we Something walked. Like that. Yeah, well, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> and then we walked through it, and like the first thing you come to is that nasty, was falling bad. down, caved in part. And, and we thought, mm. <sighs> yeah. And because I was counting on, you know, Chris to look at it because she flipped houses and things. And she was like, I don't know. <laughs> this one it looks pretty tough. And then we walked up onto the main floor and was like, oh, yeah, sold. Yeah. It was, it was like frozen in time. Other than the pile of clothes and the raccoon poop. <laughs> There was, a, there was a few things. There was a few <laughs> things that were just quite not right. But the but, woodwork and the floor uh, and the... Uh, yeah. The outside. Yeah, and then we went upstairs, and here in the library, the shelves are full of textbooks. There's desks, yeah. and it's like, it's it. It, yeah. it, just, it was just it. Yeah. Yep. yep. We knew yep, it. Yep, yep. And that was three years ago on October 4th. Oh. And then by the time this... On Saturday will yeah. be, so how many days later, we found the people that owned the school yeah. and a week. And Chris called me and said, I think I just bought a school. I think we just bought a school. Because I had to make this split second decision because they had it sold. <laughs> and I'm like, no, we want to save it. Because they, yeah. whoever they had it sold was going to tear it down. So, yeah. And so then it was October 9th that we came back to the school. Which is, is that the day this is going to air? <gasps> yes. Look at how God just has <clears throat> organized everything. Mm -hmm. So October 9th was the day we met with the owners and we signed that we wanted to buy it. And yeah. that's the day we bought it. And then the really strange thing was it was a year later. It took us an entire year to find somebody that would want to finance this weird thing that we were doing. Mm -hmm. We went to how many banks, yes. and then we um, had been given the information of an alumni of the school mm -hmm. that might help us out. And so we had been in contact with him. And then it was a year later on October 8th, which is his birthday. <laughs> and um, October 9th was the day that we got, um, he yeah. decided to give us the financing to do this entire project. Yeah. So the loan to do the entire thing. And during while this is airing, we will be at his surprise birthday party. Yes, and we can say that <laughs> because, because we'll be there. We'll be there and we'll be surprising. Him. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. It's not I later hope we're in not. the afternoon. <laughs> I hope we're not ruining it. He doesn't Shh. watch YouTube. I don't, but I'm guessing he doesn't have time to watch YouTube. He's such a busy man. Yeah. 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 This is it's amazing. A, yeah, it is amazing how it all came and God around. just orchestrated all of it. All glory to him because it is seriously amazing. Is. And the the other thing that ties it all together is my daughter for yes. her for her eighth birthday, she had asked for a lamb for her birthday, and her birthday is October eighth, <laughs> and don't she figure. shares it with. Uh, Ron Anderson, who is the yep. one that loaned us all the money for this project. Yep. They share the same birthday. Yep. And the day that we signed the papers with him was on his birthday. Yes. It all kind of just... It does. And the day, yeah, the day that we signed the paper with the people that owned it before us to buy it was... The yeah, it was the day after his birthday. <sighs> it's just... Amazing. Yeah, it just gives you goosebumps. It's just mm -hmm. all so, you know, and this is just the start. I mean, God has such a big plan for this place that we're just on the cusp, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. All right. Okay, snowman bundle. Talk about this as I adorn myself with this. So we have a needle felting kit that I designed that it is one of our easiest kits. It's the snowman. And it's one of our most popular kits. I sell it on Etsy and on the website. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> uh, several years ago, we 
um, put together a bundle and that includes there is a knitting pattern on how to make a hat and scarf. I have mm -hmm. making snow. I have been making snowmen for years and years, mm -hmm. and they have a knitted hat and scarf. Mm -hmm. And people wanted to know how to do that, so I put together a knitting pattern. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, with the help of Chris and the mill, we have put together uh, little skeins of snowman hat and scarf yarn. And I and, yeah. and these go mm -hmm. together in the snowman bundle. Mm -hmm. And in the snowman bundle, you get the kit. You get the pattern for the hat and scarf, mm -hmm. and you get the yarn. Yeah, and, and you get to choose from different colors. Yeah, and I must say that this is this is from our sheep. And mind you, I you know we just really can't stress this enough that Jeff is out there probably right now taking poop samples <laughs> of your sheep <laughs> and looking. I mean these these are sheep that that are loved and that are raised <laughs> and that are yeah it's, we're it's, taking care of them down to yes. the, down to their poop down to their poop to make sure that they're worm free <laughs> and and we're not importing anything i mean this this mm -hmm. this little skein of yarn is is the cormel sheep and the romney sheep a 50 50 blend and i might add it's spectacular yeah, i mean really i mean sad. i really like this batch that we did it, it it's just it's so super soft it's just mm -hmm. wonderful and you know and it's and to think it's it's very frustrating for us because anybody can go and import you know big chunks of of wool of all different colors and sell them and they have no idea i mean in 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 other countries, oh my gosh, they do horrible things to their animals sometimes. We don't even want to talk about that here. And but, yeah. yeah. They, and the other thing is they're using wool that isn't the best for needle felting. Mm -mm. Um, I have been needle felting for many, many years and I have found the best wool for needle felting. Mm -hmm. And they are just getting what they can import and what is the most popular yeah. in their kits and in, when, in their needle felting. And we have found the the best wool to felt with and Correct. that's what's included in our kits mm -hmm. and it's all grown by us uh, mm -hmm. i have been uh, breeding my sheep and um, getting them um, crossbred and everything to mm -hmm. get the, the, the best. best needle felting wool and mm -hmm. we take good care of our sheep and mm -hmm. then all of the wool is processed here in the gnome school house basement mm -hmm. And yep. it's washed, processed, and Dyed, put into your kits. Everything, everything is done right here. Mm -hmm. You won't find any any other place that does that. No, mm -hmm. no. Yeah, and it, and it is very frustrating when you know because and and on the flip side, you know, like you said, this is your what you breed for. You bred specific for this, mm -hmm. and. And these folks, they bring in, you know, merino or whatever, whatever it is. It just doesn't felt as good. So how frustrating for those new felters. Mm -hmm. They've tried and then they don't continue in the craft because it's too frustrating. And it, it you know, it, it, it makes it difficult. Yeah. Well, merino yeah. is soft and it is what people say is the most popular wool, but it is not the best wool for needle felting. Mm -hmm. And that is what mm -hmm. is most often imported and used for needle felting kits. So, yeah. So bear that in mind, you yeah. know, it's when not, it's not that we're just trying to, hey, buy from us. That's not at all what we're trying to do is, is we don't want you frustrated because <laughs> I know even on, from a, a spinning end, you get some of those dense merino um, braids and whatnot. It's so hard to draft them when you're spinning as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, some locally sourced fibers that that are processed here in the united states from some of our small cottage mills that we have across the united states it it drafts so easy it, it makes spinning fun mm -hmm. rather than a struggle and it's the same thing with needle felting so yeah you know bear that in mind it, it's kind of sourcing it's like we all want to know where our food comes from we should know where yeah. it's very important yeah. to know where your fiber comes from absolutely how the animals are treated and how mm -hmm. it's processed yep absolutely mm -hmm. so on that note, all right, we have one little animal that needs to be shown and <laughs> smudge. It's smudge not here. is going to be another week. And I'm sure y'all are saying, oh my gosh. Yeah, but we have this dear Gertrude come and, and oh, you'll enjoy just, Gertrude. You'll enjoy Gertrude. We haven't so. shared her yet. No. She next? 
She is next. Yep. Yes. So mm -hmm. um, we have Gertrude Gilbertson Larson. Okay. She was born in 1916, okay. graduated from the Nome School, Nome Public School in 1933. We don't even have an annual that goes back that far. Mm -hmm. We did find a, a little piece of her graduation announcement thing. Yes. And, um, she, and she was, was valedictorian. She was valedictorian. And um, actually, Randy found that for us. Yes, thank you, Randy. And um, we really enjoyed visiting with her. We had her sit in one of our old desks yes. uh, for the interview. And I wish we could have gotten all her little funny comments that she had throughout, oh, she's a hoot. throughout the day. She but is a hoot. I wasn't that quick with the record. <laughs> As I should have been, but she was hilarious. Yes. She had so many funny things. And, mm -hmm. But this is her um, interview with us. Mm -hmm. Yep. Teresa and I are so honored to have you here. We, I, I, I just floored. You are 105 years old. Uh, 105 and a half yesterday, and <laughs> someone brought me flowers. Oh. <laughs> well, that's Can you so believe it? something to celebrate you look amazing and mm -hmm. and yeah yeah scampered up the steps to get here and oh we're just we're so honored so now you attended school here right did you graduate from here I I graduated high school here you did okay. elementary elementary I was at East Edge North Dakota a little town yeah actually just a place to drop off cream cans and things, I think, in an elevator four miles from here. Had a nice two-room, believe it or not, elementary school, four grades in each room. And wow. the most exciting thing, there was an, a chemical toilet, so we didn't have to go outside to go to the bathroom. Boy, and that one was, for boys and one for girls. That was pretty advanced then, wasn't it? So Wow. Well, advanced from... The outdoor biffy <laughs> to not having to go outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. But, but our farm was halfway between Nome and Catherine. And incidentally, this school was built the year I was born. I didn't realize that. Uh, 1916. Wow. <laughs> and I had uh, a grandmother and grandfather who lived near Nome. Okay. And my Two, the two younger aunts graduated Nome. What year did you graduate? 1933. 1933. Been a while. Wow. So, but it was, you know, right during Depression time, yeah. and school was just a necessary thing. And I can, you know, when they walk, talk about all the fun they had and the things they did and the band concerts, we did not, I do not recall a band any of the four years because how they even kept the school open. open. Yeah. yeah. But of course, we they had the basic, they had this beautiful new school. And then because of the dirty 30s yeah. and the depression, there, were, there was just nothing. Wow. So uh, I know uh, when they were talking about a band, they came out to the farm, and of course the school owned no instruments, you had to buy your own. Well, farmers, and no one could pay their taxes, much less, that would have been such a luxury. Yeah. I mean, coffee before a horn, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> Amen. You could, yeah. So, it, you know, it was, it, and because everyone was in the same boat, you didn't even realize that you were, how poor your parents were. Yeah. But, you know, so many people, unfortunately, I say very fortunately, you know, uh, we did not lose our farm. But, that, you know, that was the time when people, you got out of high school, and most of the boys, I think, went directly into the CCC camp. We have heard of those, yeah. if you had history at all in school. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just not a time for anything that cost, and you never made a phone call unless there was a death or an accident or someone was in dire need. Mm -hmm. Never just to tell a joke or say, how are you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Bad time, oh, but yeah. good time. So do you have a favorite memory of going to school here? Do I have a favorite? 
Is this for you, our ears only? Will anyone else hear this? A couple other, <laughs> couple other folks might, but. I had such a crush on my algebra teacher. <laughs> Did you? I love it. That was at first, you know, yeah. when you're 13. Yes, yes. Away from home. Yes. I can still even, he was just a tall blonde. I, I, and he probably taught algebra and, of course, some other things, too, but I had algebra one. He was yeah. a dream. And then my science teacher was a Miss Thompson, just a very proper lady. And, of course, I, she maybe had two skirts and two tops, but I always remember the pleated skirt she wore, and she taught us sewing and what little cooking, you know, general it was under the general science. Okay, like a home ec type class? Yeah, yeah. but it, it wasn't called home ec. Okay. But that was the most boring class I'd ever been in. Oh, no. Because my grandmother had a sewing machine, and my mother had a sewing machine, and dishes, and cooking. That was very boring. Yeah, yeah. History it was my, always my favorite subject. Was it? Oh, wow. But anyhow... As long as we're talking high school, uh, I maybe I don't know how many about a dozen kids I suppose graduate mm -hmm. ten twelve, mm -hmm. but I, I had the last part of the program because I was the valedictorian, okay. and I would I was praying. I, I hope I am so hoarse I can't say words that someone could read it. No one, absolutely no one has ever been in this school who was so shy and afraid to even speak up. And I had to do that. And I, you know, I, I did it. I guess yep. it was fine. Yep. Wow. But, but anyhow, it was so traumatic. Yeah. And, and, then, and of course, graduation was such a big thing because we had the baccalaureate one night and, Graduation one night. Graduation mm -hmm. at the hall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Indeed. And I, I was trying to think the fact that we had baccalaureate, and they said, well, you have to get, do that two times, you know, you have to give it for the graduation and I'm back here. And they let me off, and I thought, and I think I was just sort of mesmerized, you know, uh, get this over with. Yeah, yeah. Horrible. Oh, did you go on to any schooling after high school? Yes. Oh, I, uh, I, I always had wanted to be a nurse from just little cats, dogs, everything. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I did have, when you say a scholarship, it was so minimal. But Jamestown College and Concordia gave but they did, ha they did not have a nursing program, and, hmm. and uh, so I went to uh, St. Luke's School of Nursing. Oh, okay. they did, you know, they did the four years and three, so I got my RN. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome, but awesome. It was fun. Yeah. That's what I really liked. Uh -huh. Two years, my mother had a brother who was a rural mail carrier, and Two years I stayed with them because they had little children, and of course I ate there. I was like a little nanny. Mm -hmm. And then two years, um, my sister, who was three years older than I, was in high school. And they called it light housekeeping. And some of the widow ladies, I think, and for two years, my sister and another girl and myself, we were all three in one little bedroom. and. We did what we call light housekeeping. We'd bring food from home for the week, you know. We'd uh, come because we were four miles from too far to walk, yeah, and, and no other transportation. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, bring food from home. And you were going to tell Teresa and I something serious. You said, "Well, that I had such a crush on my <laughs> algebra teacher." <laughs> Yes. That helped me get an A, I suppose, because I wanted to show off that I, if it's something I learned. Then. Yes, yes. You tried extra hard. I did my best. Yes. <laughs> um, what did you think when 
you heard that we were going to renovate the school, fix it up. Well, I tell you, I, can they find it? Because uh, uh, another cousin of mine whose mother had graduated, we came up especially to Nome because she said, I've always heard about the Nome School. We came to Nome and we couldn't find it. We could not see the building and there was that much brush. No one would believe that. You'd think that we'd been at the bar all afternoon or something, that we just would, but you could not. And finally, we located it. I didn't even get out of the car. Mm -hmm. It was midsummer with heavy, not only heavy leaf growth, but I think a lot of brush and shrubbery and weeds. I'm just amazed when I first heard it. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Did you think we'd get it done? Well, I, I thought she'd be old, decrepit, hard-working, worn-out women, and here you are. Well, it looked like you just out of high school. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> no, no, but, but I thought that what I have thought often, though, Emma, didn't your heads go like that a lot? I, you were still speaking and smiling and liking each other. Yeah. That's a marvel. Yeah. It, and it also made, yeah. I think you should go to Washington, D.C. and show Washington that women can accomplish. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's yeah. awesome. I really awesome. think so. Okay, and I'm sure you all now are <laughs> as in love with Gertrude as Teresa and I are, because mm -hmm. she is such a sweetie. Yeah. And, on, and, and also, we just also want to mention that Libby is now here on site at the Gnome Schoolhouse mm -hmm. full time. Her apartment is almost done. Almost done. Her island is not done. Um, there's some closet door, closet doors, some things, but she is here mm -hmm. and her apartment is amazing. Yeah. Oh man, I'm jealous. It's so it's cool. beautiful. So cool. Yeah. So I, we'll, I was we'll sitting in there, sitting point. in there one night at sunset. Oh. And then I went home and it's like, oh, my windows are inferior. <laughs> <laughs> and I have big windows at home, so. Nothing like just, what she has. But it's there. like just being at this level and looking out yeah. over it. No. It's pretty cool. It's beautiful. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay, and then questions. We didn't have any questions. The, our question to you all was who donated the flag? And, and nobody didn't, answered. Nobody, nobody even forward. tried. So. To Once answer. again, who donated the flag? Because we love these. And there is a video out. on our grand opening, which yes. might give you a clue. A clue, yes. And, and then, the YouTube surrounding our grand opening might give you a clue. I think. And then the other, but the other questions that we really want your questions for Gertrude. That that is. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that I'm really because help us with it because I mean I mean we had so many questions that we wanted, but then when she was here, we we're just like. Uh. <laughs> Couldn't think of any. Yeah, she. Oh, she was just such a. I'm just in awe of her. Okay, and our upcoming events are, of course, Thursdays five to nine, Thursday Thursdays, Tuesdays nine to noon, and Saturdays nine. No, no, no. Tuesdays no. all day nine, nine to, to five. five. Saturdays nine to yeah. noon. Yes, mm -hmm. and then talk about the Gnome Schoolhouse dinner. Which October is October twenty second. It's a Friday evening. It is listed now, so you can purchase tickets. Uh, it's got mm -hmm. uh, garlic herb focaccia. Can I say that right? I focaccia bread. And tapenade. And tapenade. tapenade. Honey balsamic roasted carrots. Those are my favorite. I could have a whole meal on those. Red wine braised short rib pasta, which <gasps> includes fresh, fresh homemade, homemade pasta, pasta. Oh, pasta and locally amazing. raised beef from our farm. Oh my goodness. Ombre and then chocolate ombre cake chocolate with... cake. <gasps> with caramel filling. I could have a meal on just that. Uh, painting with wool to create needle felted pictures. That's I did a little interview with her this mm -hmm. past week, so you can find that on Facebook. Yep, she was here, spent the night with us at the Gnome Schoolhouse. And she gave us a gift. Oh. Which we should share. Amazing gift. You'll insert the picture here. Yes, she needle felted the Gnome Schoolhouse. We are still in awe. Awe. And then on to top that, she, yeah. she put it, she framed it, her, her husband, mm -hmm. framed it in a, desktop like an old desktop they cut it out he routed it out so it fit perfectly in there yeah. we are we just look in awe yeah and that, that will cute. forever hang in our dining room anyone mm -hmm. that comes can see that because it is yeah. 
Um, and, and both of them are a delight. I just yes, want to stay take here them home evening. with me and yeah. keep them forever because they are just... And she'll be an amazing teacher oh, for this, my this retreat. Oh, my goodness, yes. uh, She was a teacher for I don't remember how many years, but she's 30 mm -hmm. some. And yes. she shares that in her interview. And mm. she would be the mm. most amazing teacher for this. Absolutely. And she's going to teach you how to paint uh, with landscapes. Wool. With wool. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that is October 23rd and 24th. It's a retreat, mm -hmm. uh, just a short little retreat. And you yeah. get the food here. You stay mm -hmm. here. All we the, all the, everything you need, all your materials. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then that is the, actually the next uh, retreat that we have it here. Is. So yeah. you're going to have to sign up quickly. And you have the option to stay here. There are rooms left. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Or you can come camp or you can go home for the night. I mean, yeah. And if you have any questions at all, you can ask us at any time. Mm -hmm. uh, the Roly Poly Basket Weaving Class with Marcy Blickery is That's October 23rd, one. which mm -hmm. is a Saturday. Uh, we've had several sign up for that already, and I just mm -hmm. listed that yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, the Taste of Fiber Retreat only is November 5th through the 7th. Maybe there's two. I think there's only one, though. I'm not sure. Yeah. Almost and then we have the Amy Munson Art Quilting Weekend Retreat at the Gnome Schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. And that's November 12th through the 14th. That'll be and amazing. you'll she be making, I mean, it's not just your average mm -hmm. quilting. Mm -hmm. So if you do quilting, you might want to take this uh, retreat, do this retreat, because uh, she will be teaching you a whole new way of quilting. Mm -hmm. yeah, and amazing. she has um, the crazy quilts. She does a whole talk on that, and she has a collection mm -hmm. of them that she's going to share. Mm -hmm. Um, Among other things. Then we have the holiday door decoration basket with Marcy mm -hmm. Blickery, and that's mm -hmm. another basket weaving. That's November 13th. Mm -hmm. We have an all-inclusive needle felting weekend with me, and that will be here at the school. Chris and I will be here the entire weekend to visit with you, to get to know you. We're going to uh, have fun, fun, We're going to do mill tour. Uh, we're going to be just felting and having fun, sitting around the fire. Yep. And... Um, Hopefully see the sheep. Yeah. Uh, then we'll have the catch-all basket weaving class with Marcy Blickery on December 4th. And then Gnome for the Holidays is coming Stay up that next that. weekend after that in December. Coming. We do. Yep. And we have November a, and December, we'll have extended hours. There'll be for plenty shopping. of time for you to shop. And mm -hmm. We are stuck in the store. We are. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So for next time, below, comments. If you have You're any questions, your phone, you gotta go all the way down. Way down. It's kind of goofy, but yeah. It is. It's different yeah. on the computer than on your phone. Mm -hmm. But if you have questions, we love to answer your fiber arts questions. Um, and if it's something a little more detailed, we'd love to like even put a video together for this you. Um, yeah. We would be happy to do that. Absolutely. Uh, so we love your questions. They help us know what you want to know. God bless you all for supporting us and yes. all of the above. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Yep, yep, yep. And on that note, that's all, folks. Spend a day or two here. Oh, <laughs> we'd love to keep you, so. <laughs> Who says North Dakota isn't interesting? Yeah. <laughs> but Please like this video, comment below, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching.